Today on the Transplant Helper, I'm going to explain to you why even though you may only have a fever, if you will, of say 99.3, you could actually be in big trouble and you need to call your doctor. Go ahead and stay tuned. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to become part of the Transplant Helper community. Well, good morning, Transplant Helper community. My name is Jim Merle, and you know, tis the season for colds, flus, viruses, bacteria, bugs, fungus, all that stuff is among us. And during this time, being immunosuppressed, like most of us are, a post-transplant, we're going to definitely, probably, more than likely, statistically, run into some issues. Whether it's catching every cold, flu, or virus that comes around us, or whether it's just kind of getting a problem of our own where we just feel like junk, it can definitely happen this time of year. And so we have to be overly cautious to be certain that we're not being exposed to anything that we don't have to. And then if we are, that we're taking precautions in order to keep from getting sick. And then once that point occurs where you start to feel like you maybe are getting sick, that you're taking the right plan of action to make sure that that doesn't end up being a big deal. And I always go back and quote a time in my life, back about three or so years ago, when everybody around me was catching the stomach virus, okay? It was a affecting them. It was causing them problems, but basically they were getting over it in about 24 to 48 hours. However, when I got the stomach virus back then being immunosuppressed, it didn't last me 24 to 48 hours. It actually lasted me 14 days, all of which I ended up spending time in the hospital, getting IV drips, getting all kind of antibiotics, antivirals, all this stuff going on. Had to go through a colonoscopy, which I didn't enjoy at all. Um, you know, that sort of thing, because they want to be sure that was all that was going on. Because even to my team, it didn't make sense that I wasn't getting over this, if it be the common a stomach bug or virus. And turned out it was just being immunosuppressed. I could not fight for myself. So during this season, you have to be extremely cautious not to be exposed to those things if possible. You know, I always say mask up, wash up, glove up. And that could certainly be the case in a lot of cases. You just have to be overly cautious. But make sure that you always pay attention to your body and you know your body so that if any problem starts to arise, you'll be the first to know it and you'll be the first to do what I call telling on yourself. That is calling your team and letting them know that you're having an issue, okay? And so knowing your body is important. However, one of the things you have to know about your body is that your body is not going to act nor react to the common colds, flus, or viruses symptomatically in exactly the same way as everybody else. And that's particularly an issue when it comes to running a fever. Now, if I call up my coordinator today, and I'm just making up a scenario, although I do have a stuffy nose, but if I call my coordinator today and I say, Connie, this is Jim, I'm having a sinus headache, stuffed up nose, a little bit of a cough, a sore throat, feeling like I've got something going on in my lungs. Generally speaking, I'm just aching all over, shooting pains in my hands and such. She's going to in turn ask me after that, Jim, are you running a fever? And if I turn and reply to her, well, actually, not really. My fever is only around 99. She's going to say probably, well, this may not be an issue until you start running a fever above 100.4. That's not really a fever. So a doctor or nurse would say, and so this may not really be an issue. How about just let it run its course for another day? And if you get any worse, then give me a call. However, I've learned through experience and through research and through digging things out that that is not the answer I'm going to be able to accept. Now, I love Connie to death. I think my team is great. But if she tries to blow me off with a fever of 99 point something, I'm not going to be blown off by that because I realize that being immunosuppressed, I'm not going to react to the same things that others do who are not immunosuppressed, such as I'm not necessarily going to run high fevers. Now, inside of your first year or so, for example, post-transplant, many of you are on a drug called Bactrim. Bactrim is just exactly uh, a very simple, cheap drug. It is an antibiotic, basically. You're also on a drug, many of us, not all, but on a drug called Valcite. That is an antiviral. So you got an antibacterial, you got an antiviral inside of the first year. And if you're on those medications, that is in there to work with your immune system that is typically suppressed and to give it a little bit of extra defense 
against any issues. But once you get outside that first year and they take you off of that antibacterial slash antiviral, those two medications, now you're all on your own. Now your body's there having to fight itself naturally, having to stand up against these colds and flus and viruses and bacteria and fungus among us. They got to fight all by itself. And what ends up happening then is you and I are so immune suppressed still that we tend to catch nearly everything. But when we catch that, Again, we don't react in the same way. For example, I like to tell people that if my fever, Jim Merle fever, is 99, that's like anybody else's 100.2. And the reason behind that is with those immune suppressant drugs, particularly like that corticosteroid, prednisone, particularly like things like Prograf, Taculemus, Ceremus, uh, your myfortic falls in the same state. Even though those drugs are working hard to keep us from going into rejection by lowering our immune system just enough, trying to balance that, while they're doing that, they are opening a door for anything else in the world to come in. And at the same time, all of those drugs combined oftentimes can lower your white blood counts, which by the way, your white blood cells are so important in your body. Basically, they go all through your body's circulatory system, through your veins, your vessels travel in your blood as part of the blood, and they look for problems. They look for the bugs. They look for colds, flus, viruses, all these issues, and they dig through. And if they see any of that going on in your body, which potentially could make you very sick, uh, they're going to go in and attack that. And one of the ways they attack that is by bringing on their backs, if you will, antibodies. Antibodies that your body has made throughout all of its life where it's seen this before, it's been there, done that. Now it knows the recipe, it knows the prescription to go in and attack this certain virus. And it brings that in. And sometimes you can actually be sick on the inside and never feel anything on the outside because your body takes care of things. With those white blood cells, with those antibodies, it takes care of things. But when you're immune suppressed and your antibodies are lower, it may not have what it needs to fight. So it may send a gang of antibodies down to the area where the infection is, is hovering. Maybe it's in your lungs, in your sinus, or you know anywhere in your body. Maybe it sends those white blood cells in. But once it gets there, basically what happens, and it happens with everybody, is it gets down there and it starts to fight. And it says, I can't, I can't do this. I can't win this battle. So it calls out through a pyrogen to send a message back up to the hypothalamus in the brain to raise your body's core temperature. That's what a fever is. A fever is a group of white blood cells, a group of antibodies that's called out for help and ask for the, to the hypothalamus and to ask it to raise that body's core temperature. Now, it can do that, and in most people, it will. You may then, in turn, start having a fever. Maybe it's 101, 102, 103. I've had fevers over 104 degrees before. Uh, they feel terrible, but it's your body's doing its job, its duty to save your life. And the way that's working is not only are the antibodies now working, but it's creating an environment through that core temperature being raised inside of your body. It's creating an environment where the viruses and the bacteria cannot live. They typically live very well at that 98.6 degree temperature in our bodies. But if you raise that up, even by a degree or two or three, then they're not going to be able to survive. And that is a part of the way your body's system fights to keep away the colds, the flus, and the viruses or to put them down when they are there. And that's why a lot of times you'll hear, hear people say, particularly in the pediatric side of things, so children's world, They'll say, well, don't give the kid uh, Tylenol or Motrin right quick because it's better to have the fever so the fever can naturally do its body's job. And to an extent, that's true. Now, if they get uncomfortable or if those fevers get over, say, 103 degrees, your doctor may have a different recommendation. But that 101, 102 degree fever, sometimes they'll say, let it, let it do its thing. The problem is when we have lowered white blood cell counts as a result of that lowered immune system, our white blood cells go down there and they start to fight and basically they get their hands full and they may not call back up to the hyperthalamus to call for that body temperature to be risen. Or maybe if they do, there's not enough there for that body temperature to rise. So you and I, we're experiencing, you know, sinus headaches, uh, runny stuffed up nose, coughs, sore throats, uh, problems feeling in our lungs like we got pneumonia or something going on terrible aches, pains. I get a lot of shooting pains in my hands and feet. We're experiencing all of that, but when we're questioned about it, do you have a fever? We have to say no because our body's not able to produce it. So what have I said in all of that? We spent about, what, nine or so minutes to say this, basically. If you're immunosuppressed, 
You need to go by the symptoms. Yes, when you call your team up or call your general practitioner for an appointment, when you tell them about your issues, you need to go ahead and let them know all your symptoms and such. But when they get down to the question, are you running a fever? Your answer to that may be no, but it should not be just no. It should be no, I'm not, but... But I'm immunosuppressed, and I don't typically run fevers, and so we can't go by that. Because you still need to go in the clinic. You still need to go in and get blood work done, get a physical examination done, maybe get some cultures drawn in many cases to find out what's really going on on the inside. And I think this is extremely important to understanding our bodies and understanding that we're not going to react sometimes with those fevers like the average person would. Therefore, we could actually be sick. When we're not, by most people's definition, sick, or maybe sometimes when we just don't feel that sick. And I know I'm I'm a guy, so I'm the guy who waits till, you know, I've got one foot in the grave and uh, I can't even get out of the bed before I call the doctor. But I've gotten more aware over the years that that's not the way to be. So call your doctor if you're feeling any type of symptoms this time of year, particularly, especially with flu season looming like it is. Go ahead and call them up. Give them the talk. Let them know that you would really like to be seen. It would be better to be seen and to know what's going on than for them to tell you, let's try to wait this thing out because sometimes it's just not going to work. Your fever is a sign of something, no matter how low it is. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this has helped you out in some way, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and a like. That just lets YouTube know that you've enjoyed this video, that you found some value in it. In addition to that, today is the perfect day to go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click that big subscribe button, maybe the bell notification off beside that. And every time I put out content, which I intend to keep doing, which will help to advocate, educate, and motivate you as a transplant patient and to share information like this, You'll be able to see that. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, each and every one of you, I love you and stay stronger, friends.